Right, so a few days ago, there was this Israeli terrorist attack at the Natanz nuclear facility in Iran, right? You remember that? This is uh, a facility that's been targeted before by Israel. In 2010, they did a, a joint uh, a program with the CIA. They developed this computer virus to sabotage the centrifuges. Um, and then last year, there was a, another mysterious explosion there. And then this time, a few days ago, while, while there are talks underway in Vienna, what the Israelis did is they, um, they sabotaged the electricity, right? They cut the power to the facility, and therefore you, you had um, uh, a blackout, and this, this damaged some of the centrifuges. So Iran's response to this terrorist attack, um, they've done several things, right? So what they've announced now, they're increasing their uranium enrichment to 60%, to 60%. OK, so let me, let me just explain to you the significance of that. Now, this is from The Guardian. OK, Iran is to boost its levels of uranium enrichment to 60 percent, just short of weapons grade purity in response to Israel's attack on the Natanz nuclear facility. The country's deputy foreign minister has announced. OK, and let, let me explain that to you, because in the JCPOA and the Iran nuclear deal, it stipulates that Iran can't enrich uranium past 3.67 percent. OK. In the past, again, this is part of um, Iran's strategy when dealing with aggression. It's always tit for tat, right? So when, when Trump pulled out of the deal, they actually waited a year to, to do anything. Um, and then, uh, you know, basically on, on the anniversary of it, they, they decided to start ramping up. You know, they did several things. They ramped up number of centrifuges, for example. Uh, after uh, Fakhri Zadeh, the scientist, was assassinated. Again, this is it's likely Israel behind that. Just a few um, just a few months ago, Iran's response was we're going to enrich uranium to 20 percent. Right. So so every time they're increasing them with centrifuges, they're uh, enriching uranium uh, past the, the, the limits. But, but you have to keep in mind something that this is actually still part of the deal. Right. The, the article 36 and 37 in the JCPOA, they stipulate that that if the you know, the United States reimposes sanctions or if the other countries are not doing um, what they're supposed to, they're not upholding their end of the deal. Iran can take that as uh, this non-performance, you know, as a sign of non-compliance and that therefore they're not limited by those um, stipulations. So, you know, th this is basically saying to the uh, United States, to Israel, to to the European powers and uh, well, Russia and China are also part of the JCPOA, but, you know, they're they're. Um, uh, they basically, on, they're on Iran's side, of course, right? So they're not trying to squeeze Iran in, in terms of this. But Iran is saying, like, look, you know, you want to keep messing with us. We're going to keep going higher and higher. First 20%, now 60%. And again, weapons grade is 90%. But Iran is not pursuing a bomb. Like, go watch my interview with, with Scott Ritter. I think he would know. Uh, you know, he's a former UN weapons inspector. He knows what he's talking about. And he, go, he goes into detail. Like, we went into technical detail about why this is just impossible. It, just, it doesn't work. So they're not they're not pursuing a bomb, but it, it, it is kind of giving the finger in response. Right. And we don't just have, we don't just have that. We don't just have that. Right. So um, there's also an Israeli commercial vessel that was uh, blown up. Right. And uh, not a military one. Again, it's a commercial one. So here this is from Al Jazeera, 14th April. A commercial vessel owned by an Israeli firm was attacked off the coast of the United Arab Emirates in Gulf waters. Pro Iran media and an Israeli television channel said on Tuesday. Right. Israel's Channel 12 quoted unnamed Israeli officials as blaming arch foe Iran for the um, assault, which it described as a missile strike. There were no casualties and the ship continued on its course. So, you know, again, th this is in line with what we've seen before from Iran. Like, for example, when Trump assassinated Soleimani uh, in January 2020, you know, Iran attacked the Ain al-Assad base, which is um, it's a base in Iraq and it houses U.S. troops there. Right. And so they, they also attacked it with a barrage of missiles and no one was injured. Okay? Although the United States started to say like, oh, hundreds of soldiers have suffered brain injuries. I mean, it, it's nothing to be laughed at. Right. Um, it, it's just, you know, it, it's it's definitely, you know, a, a barrage of missile missiles is nothing to laugh at. But um, they've done it. They've done, they do this in a way to say that, look, we're not, you know, wa watch out. Right. <laughs> watch your goddamn step. So. This is basically, these are two other responses. And, you know, one thing that I've also seen is that um, there are reports that you had Mossad agents killed in Iraq, also in the last 48 hours. All of this happened in the last 48 hours. So you have to understand, this is quite significant, right? Ramping up the 60, uh, to 60% uranium enrichment, uh, Israeli commercial vessel is hit. And now reports that Mossad agents were killed inside of Iraq, right? So 
Again, this I think this was reported originally by Press TV, and the Israelis are denying it, of course, right? So I'm just going to read you the head the, the headline. It says three of Israel Israeli officers killed in attack against Mossad in Iraq identified, right? So they even had their names um, uh, put out. Which, of course, unlike Israel, which keeps saying that you know it's uh, bombing <laughs> Iranian troops or Iranian-backed militias in in Syria, they never publish any names, right? It's it's just an excuse. But here, there's actually receipts, right? So the Israelis, of course, are going to deny it. Of course, they're going to deny it. Um, so you know, you go, you look at the Jerusalem Post, uh, Israel Times, all of the Israeli uh, newspapers. They're they're vehemently denying it and saying, oh, it's it's just. They're actually, they're not uh, saying that, you know, um, the Mossad is officially denied because they, they've refused to comment, but they're saying that like, oh, this is just Iranian media saying it, right? So, so it's, it's kind of like they're, they're indirectly trying to disprove it without actually confirming that it's not true. You get me? Yeah, you need to pay attention to how media speak, right? They'll, they'll phrase something in a way, they'll, they'll sell you something, a story in a way that makes you think it's genuine, but if you actually <laughs> just read it properly, <laughs> They're, they're, they're not denying it, right? So, on top of that, a fourth thing, uh, although I guess, I guess this is more of just a, a, a general kind of um, response. You know, the, the Iranian Supreme Leader, uh, Ali Khamenei, he said that, let me show you this. So this is from the Associated Press, right? He's saying that Vienna's, Vienna offers are not worth looking at. What is he talking about? The, the nuclear uh, deal, the Iran nuclear deal, they're having talks right now here in Vienna, right? So you have two working groups that are, that are working on this. And, you know, he said that basically in terms of what the Europeans are proposing, right? Um, European powers, meanwhile, warned Tehran its, act its actions were particularly regrettable and dangerous, right? So they're talking about the fact that Iran is responding to Israel, which I mean... They, they, I wonder why they never condemn Israel, right? Isn't that weird? I, I, it's weird, right? They're always condemning Iran for some reason, but never Israel. Like, like if, <laughs> if Iran attacked a nuclear facility in Israel, I'm pretty sure they, they would condemn that. But apparently, they say nothing. In any case, um, what, what uh, Ali Khamenei is saying here, the offers, quote, the offers they provide are usually arrogant and humiliating and are not worth looking at, right? And he, he's talking about, of course, you know, what, what the Europeans are doing because... Um, Let's get something straight, and I've told this to you many times. Uh, you know, the European powers, the United States does not have allies. They're, they're a bunch of poodles on a leash. That's what it's about, right? That's what the European powers are. And regrettably, even when the United States pulled out of the deal, when Trump pulled out in May 2018, they kind of followed suit, right? Without, without pulling out, they still kind of, um, you know, they, of course they publicly said, no, this is bad, and we want, to re we want everyone to come back to the table and re-enter the deal. But, you know, they, they've, they've also complied with the sanctions indirectly, right? Which is, which is ridiculous. And the thing is that Iran's been very clear, like lift the sanctions, we want all sanctions lifted, banking, oil, uh, you know, finance, all, every sector, you lift the sanctions, and then in a verifiable way, right? Because I mean, the, the last deal, well, <laughs> the, the current deal, which the United States left, uh, which they're trying to make a new one, right? They're trying to make a new one. But anyway, just not to confuse you, in the deal, in the Iran nuclear deal, everything that Iran has to do is verifiable, right? You have cameras in the nuclear facilities that are sending 24-7 monitoring to the International Atomic Energy Agency, also in Vienna. And you have special seals that are put there by the IAA inspectors. The IAA inspectors can go anywhere they like. That's, that's uh, provided by the additional protocol. So, you, you know, there are many uh, safeguards on top of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty that make sure with the JCPOA and the, and the additional protocol that Iran can't make a bomb. This is, it, again, I told you, like, if there's one country on Earth where you want to make sure there's no bomb, it's Iran. Because there's so much surveillance, it's, it, there's so many eyes on Iran, it's just impossible. Nonetheless, where, how do you make sure the United States holds up their end of the deal? There's nothing there, right? And you need, you, need at least, you need at least a couple of weeks to make sure that they've lifted all the sanctions, right? They have 1,500 sanctions on Iran. Yeah, you heard that correctly. 1,500. That's more than all the other countries combined that the U.S. is sanctioning. They really hate Iran. And this is, I mean, it's not funny. Like, this is actually killing people. I've told you how, how every country that's targeted by sanctions is siege warfare, right? Like, my, my, my cousins are starving in, in, in Syria, right? You got to wait two, three hours in line just to get bread. And, and, and that's if there is bread. There are other parts in Syria, right, where people have no bread. It's, it, and, and it's not just bread. It's all kinds of supplies. So Iran is targeted by even more sanctions. Now, they've done pretty well on their own, right? They managed to, you know, uh, to stand up on their own feet. And they're even helping other countries. They're sending oil to Syria, oil to, uh, fuel to Venezuela. So 
you know, they're, they're managing, but it doesn't mean that it's pleasant. And, and they need time to verify that the United States holds up their end of the deal, right? Which they're not doing. And everything that the Europeans are saying, just to go back to, to um, what Ali Khamenei means, is that, you know, they're, they're, they're just, <laughs> they're, they're acting as intermediaries between um, the, the United States and Iran. But it's like, there, there's nothing to negotiate here. You know, it's like you need to lift, the, the United States needs to lift the sanctions first. It's very clear. Um, you know, I, I, I don't get how, how much more clear you can be than that. Uh, Iran never reneged uh, it, its end of the deal. And so there you go. But they, you know, just to show you also about the uh, centrifuges, because a day before the attack this week uh, from Israel, Iran went in and they replaced some of their centrifuges, right? Um, their centrifuges are broken down into uh, the, the nomenclature is broken down into the numbers. So, you know, you have IR1, that's the first generation, IR6, uh, IR8, these are the new ones, right? So, um, this is, this is what they did, right? I'm just going to show you a picture over here, by the way, so you can actually see a visual representation of it, right? So these are their centrifuges. Um, and the ones that Israel damaged, to my understanding, were the older generation, the IR-1. And the day before the attack, right? Uh, sorry, they also have the IR-9, which I forgot to mention, right? They have several of them. But not, again, they're divided into different halls inside of the facility. So th the day before the attack... Right. They had replaced some of them with the newer IR-6. And then, of course, um, now, now that Israel has damaged some of the older generation ones, Iran is not just saying that, oh, OK, we're going to enrich past 60 uh, percent uh, uranium or up to 60 percent uranium. We're also going to replace the old centrifuges with the new ones. Right. Now, look. Um, is this adequate? That, that's the question. Right. Because, again, as I told you before, my understanding uh, and again, it's by no means, um, you know, a, a, a global representation of things. But from, from what I've seen from other Iranians, from, from social media, from the news, is that, you know, th there are a lot of people that are pissed off. And there are a lot of people that are saying that this is a, this is a trap, right? Because there are people who are saying, like, yo, it's time to stand up to Israel, to the United States, to the Europeans. They're not respecting the deal. You know, they, they, they've been, uh, they've uh, as they say in Arabic, you know, they're playing... <laughs> uh, um, making you like playing catch, making you run, run, run uh, in the middle. So, I mean, like there are people who are angry because Iran has complied with the nuclear deal every step of the way. And like, even right now, the U.S. is still pussyfooting around the issue. Also, thank you to whoever taught me that expression. <laughs> They're still tiptoeing around the issue. They're beating around the bush. They just don't want to get back in the deal and making these and sending the Europeans to make these stupid uh, re requests. It's, it's absurd. Just get back in the fucking deal. Right. You have you're in no position to demand that Iran does something which has already been doing complying with the deal when you are not even part of the goddamn deal. Right. It, it's so absurd. It's like any basic legal contract in the world functions this way. You're, if you don't comply with your obligations, the other party doesn't have to do shit. So it's on you to get back. Anyway, um, there are people who are angry about that. Right. And they, they, they're uh, thinking that Iran should have been stronger in its responses to the United States um, about this. And that the, the nuclear deal was a failure. And then there are other people who are saying that it's a trap, right? Because what Israel wants is to make Iran uh, leave the, the negotiating table, to go home, uh, you know, to um, basically put Iran in a position that they're isolated internationally, that they have no um, recourse, they burnt their bridges, and that, of course, that way, it's easier to malign Iran and actually start a conflict and draw on the United States, which is ultimately what, what Israel wants, right? Israel does not want diplomacy. That's why they hate the nuclear deal. They openly state they don't like it. So I understand both. I understand both sides. It, it makes sense, right? And you have to consider the Persians invented chess. So, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't underestimate them. I, th I do think that there's, there's a long-term strategy here, of course. Uh, but I, the silver lining, what I would say, where I'm going to leave it, okay? What I would say is that all of this... All of this has proven that you can't engage in diplomacy with the West. It's true, right? I mean, like, how much more uh, compliance and verification do you want from Iran? Like, how many more cameras do you need in the facilities? How many more seals, right? Every gram is, is counted. Every gram of fissile material. There's no fucking way they're making a bomb. Like, they've openly stated this is not within our, our policy, our religion, our, uh, you know, our, our goals. We don't want a bomb. We want a civilian nuclear program, which is allowed, right? And they won't, they won't, they won't even engage in diplomacy. The United States ripped up the deal. Cons consider this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this to you. You know, now we're in April 2021. The deal was signed in October 2015, if I recall. 
and Trump withdrew in May 2018, right? So, I mean, at this point, the United States has spent more time outside the Iran nuclear deal than inside it. Like, what does that tell you? What does that tell you about how committed they are to diplomacy? It tells you that you can't trust them. And unfortunately, the European powers, they're just going along with the United States. They're bitches, right? That's the truth. So, you know, I understand the frustration of Iranians. And, uh, I mean, dude, like, um, honestly, let, let this be a lesson. Let this be a case study for not just people today, but also future generations. You can't trust uh, uh, the United States and the European Union to engage in diplomacy. Look at how they act. Look at this. This is despicable, honestly. Right? They're playing games um, and, and making people die with sanctions uh, because, you know, they, 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 they just can't engage in diplomacy. What, what does that say about all this? You, you engage in good faith, you try your best, and then they crap all over you. That, that's what I've learned from this, you know, as a third party, as an observer. That's what I've learned. That's my takeaway. Unfortunately, right? Unfortunately.